Art School, spelled with a Q, is advertised as an art school simulation and drawing program. But maybe it's really more of an inspirational tool or just a fun bargain game to mess around in when you're bored. So Julian Glander is the developer of Art School, and he actually did a number of interesting art pieces for Adult Swim. You may recognize his work from there, it's certainly an aesthetic. His work definitely reminds me of 90s computer-generated 3D art, but it's more than just visual art. A lot of times he also combines it with musical compositions featuring a high-octave synth voice. Really interesting stuff. So picking up Art School was kind of a no-brainer for me. It's just really kind of a fun, interesting art piece that you could mess around in and possibly get inspired. It was cheap, and I know my money is going to an indie developer slash artist. For me, I can't think of a better way to tip an artist than to buy their game. We play as Froshman, who is a freshman at Art School, and your teacher is a computer AI known as Quartz. So basically you have this artistic world that you're free to explore. There are new art brushes and color swatches hidden throughout the world for you to discover in order to unlock more drawing features. It's pretty much up to you what you want to do first. Do you want to explore the world for more art tools or do you want to enter a building and start your first assignment? If so, your teacher will give you one of many randomly selected assignments to complete. A lot of these seem like good exercises in breaking down barriers that you may be setting for yourself. For example, they might have you draw something green when you don't actually have the color green. How do you draw the color green without using green? Maybe you draw dollar bills or trees. Maybe you draw an inexperienced cadet or maybe you just draw a visual representation of whatever comes to your mind when you think of the word or color green. Another assignment I got was to draw three things that are opposite of each other. Sure, it's easy to think of two things that are opposites, but how do you draw three different things that are opposite of each other? Then there are also assignments that you might be expecting to, things like draw a bicycle from memory without using a reference. Once you've finished your art piece, you can enter any building or fall off the map in order to turn it in. It's said that the AI will then grade your paper. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it decides to grade it. Maybe it's random. Maybe there really is an AI using reference material to grade your work. I couldn't tell. I made some pretty bad stuff that got graded well and stuff I put lots of work into that got graded poorly. So who knows? The game really isn't explained much, it's really just all up to you to figure out what to do, how to do it, and where to go in this world that you're just dropped into. But one thing I've noticed a lot of people don't realize while playing this game is that you have unlimited jump. So use the jump button to fly around and travel to the various floating islands when you want to search for new tools and colors. Each of these floating islands is a small, abstract, early 90s landscape to explore, with unusual foliage, odd structures, and geometric-inspired design. You can open up your art pad any time that you're feeling a burst of creativity, adjust the window to your liking, and begin sketching your assignment. For some reason, in my first game, I didn't start with the default tools that you're supposed to. Things like undo, or a pencil tool, and the color swatch for black. I actually had to reset my save in order to get those. 
So if for some reason this happens to you when you first start, be sure to wipe your save and start over before you get too far into the game. It's probably pretty uncommon though because I reported this issue to the developer and it sounded like they haven't had any reports of this happening to anyone else yet. This game really makes me wish I had a stylus for my Nintendo Switch though, but you can use your finger or you can use the analog sticks to do your drawing as well, although it's just not as ideal. So I wouldn't say this is a great program to use as an art tool and I wouldn't say it's much like a typical game either. There's no death, no intense platforming or puzzle solving. Again, to me, this is more of an inspirational art piece that can get you thinking outside of the box for a bit and challenge your artistic side. Anyway, I just thought this was an interesting, different sort of game, so I thought I'd let you guys know about it. In addition to the Nintendo Switch, it's also available on Steam. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.